we all have sense organs, five sense organs. In Sanskrit, they are Chakshu, Karna, Nasika, Jiva, and Tvak. That is eyes, ears, the nostrils, the tongue, and the skin. <laughs> With the help of these things, we get knowledge of things come to associate with. When I was sent to this country 46 years ago, we have our headquarters, which is in India, known as the Ramakrishna Order Headquarters. It is also called Ramakrishna Mission. And then they decided that I should go via Burma, because in Rangoon, we had a Vedanta center, a fairly large one. So they wanted me to stop there. So I went there first, and the, the wife of the president of Burma, at that time it was called Burma, now the name has been changed, I think they call it Yangon or something. So, the Burma invited me to her home to have tea even in the evening. Why? Because she knew the Ramakrishna order and its activities quite well and she was highly appreciative of the work of the Ramakrishna order. And she also had traveled to different countries of the world. She was ambassador to some countries, as far as I know. And during that evening tea party, I might have said something humorous. <laughs> then I was <laughs> 46 years younger. My mind was different. <laughs> and so I said something humorously and that Burmese president's wife said to me, she was many years older than me. I was just 43 years old. I looked much younger. People would say that I looked like I was in my late 20s. Anyway, so she said to me, Swami, you have a sense of humor. It is good. You are going to America. Americans li like humor and jokes. <laughs> That's why I sometimes use humorous things during my talk. There is a joke about some Western Philosophers, or we may call them scientists, and so one such Western philosopher was asked, What's mind? He replied, No matter. Then he was asked again another question What's matter? He said, Never mind. In other words, mind is not matter. That is emphatically declared. And in Western psychology, this is the view. Mind is matter. Hmm? No, not matter. <laughs> mind is not matter. But according to Hinduism, mind is definitely matter. This idea is very ancient. India has had many ancient schools of religious philosophy. And one of the most ancient ones was 
known as the Sankhya school of philosophy. Sankhya, the word Sankhya means something which clearly explains things. Samya khyayate iti Sankhya, which explains everything clearly. <laughs> Sankhya philosophy. And according to this school of philosophy, there were two primordial entities. One was consciousness or purusha, it's called purusha. The other one is mother nature. Mother nature <coughs> didn't have consciousness. Mother nature is composed of only very, very, very fine matter. And Purusha is consciousness. Purusha also means male, the male one. And this mother nature is called Prakriti, that means a female. Just as for the creation of children or young ones, a father and a mother are needed. So also for the creation of this world, they thought that two entities, one male and another female, would be needed. <laughs> Even though they are not really male or female, Purusha has consciousness without any body or anything. And Prakriti was primordial matter without any body or anything. Extremely fine matter, so fine that you cannot even conceive of that fineness. Then, Prakriti borrowed consciousness from Purusha. And having borrowed consciousness, it starts, started evolving. And Gradually, it evolved into this world with all the varieties that we encounter in this world. Everything is an evolved form of prakriti or primordial matter. So, what about us? We are also the evolved product of Prakriti. We are, we are composed of fine matter and we didn't, we, we also have a little consciousness <laughs> which we call the soul. So the world is created that way. And according to this school of philosophy, religious philosophy, even light is fine matter. How did Prakriti evolve? Prakriti started changing. Changing. And first Prakriti became the cosmic ego. And when the cosmic ego came, then came the cosmic mind. Then, when that, or, no, first came cosmic mind and then came cosmic ego. Because ego should be there in the mind. <laughs> and then, uh, the cosmic ego, or ahankara, started evolving. It gradually became the five sense organs five motor organs and five extremely subtle substances of things. This is called... <coughs> anyway, so this so five sense organs, five motor organs and all these things were evolved out of that. And 
what we call mind in english in that philosophy it is called antakaranam inner instrument or inner organ of action it is also called antarindriya that means inner sense organ but this antakaranam that is the product of prakriti and because prakriti evolved and out of that the mind came and and the mind arantakaranam is has four names one is manas the other one is buddhi and third one is chitta and the fourth one is ahankara depending upon what the mind does suppose there is a mound of earth it appears to be it can be a big bear sitting there or it can be a mound of earth so the mind first sees it but is not able to determine what it is so this action of the mind around the corona is called manas is able to recognize something but not able to determine its true nature then the same antakarana has another part which is called buddhi or intellect that will this say no it cannot be a bear this is not the season when bears come out then no hibernating so it must be a mound of earth this definite knowledge that is from intellect we get it it is in sanskrit it is called buddhi and then chitta is the memorizing ability of the antakarana if you ask someone what did you have for breakfast and that person had breakfast several hours ago but that person will be able to remember and say well i had this i had that and so on that function of the antakarana is called chitta and the ahankara is ego if there is a mind there is ego also <laughs> ego ego is a very trouble something there from ego comes all problems so eventually we will know all those things because according to Hinduism, unselfishness is divinity. <laughs> so as long as there is selfishness, we do not experience our divinity. But anyway, that's a different matter. So ego. When I was in India, I was a young man. We used to know about some boxers and all. there is a boxer named cassius clay and he used to say i am the greatest i am the greatest <laughs> that ego ego of <laughs> cassius clay <laughs> was saying that making him say that i am in english mind intellect memorizing ability and ego these are the four functions of the antakarana or inner organ of action and and also there are five sense organs so my subject of my talk is concept of sense perception according to hinduism so i must have to talk about sense organs so there are five sense organs what are they eyes ears nose and nostrils tongue and skin and i mentioned that earlier no and what about the mind the mind is where does where is it located 
Hmm. Manas, where is it located? Some of us may think that it is located in the brain or something. That's not correct. According to Hinduism, Hindu psychology, that mind is all over the body. If a pin pricks my little finger, then I will be able to know it. Because my mind is already there. That's why I can feel it. So mind is all over the body. It uses five sense organs as five doors. The sense organs, I have already told you what they are. Eyes, ears, the nose or nostrils, the tongue and the skin. These are the five sense organs. So the mind has to be attached to them to know what function they are doing. When I am seeing something, and what happens is my mind goes out to the door of the eyes. That is a sense organ. And this mind uses all these sense organs as so many doors to go out. So it goes out through the eyes and Going out, it covers the object. It could be anything. It could be a human being, it could be a cow, or it could be a chair. See, it covers that object completely. And the mind has some consciousness in it, borrowed consciousness, which Prakriti borrowed from Purusha. And then the mind knows that object. It goes out to the eyes. Sometimes some sound is being created by some people who are exploding bombs. And then the mind will go on the coronal at that time will, the mind will go out through the door of the ears and reach there and will know what it is. It is a bomb which was exploded. That's how this mind works. Sometimes a person brings some fragrant flowers like roses and puts in front of you and your mind goes out through the nostrils and goes and covers up those flowers and then gets to know the smell of those flowers. That's how the mind works according to Hindu psychology. So the mind goes out through those doors of the sense organs and assumes the form of the outer object and stimulates the sense organs to know it. And you see, so this is how the sense perception happens. And we know that God is transcendental beyond time, space and causation. So that's why most people with their finite minds cannot reach God. 
in order to be able to know what God is like. So there is a wall between that transcendental divinity and this world of world of time, space, and causation. Then the mind can be trained to be very concentrated. How? Just like in the science they talk about photons. It is the photons who constitute light. Light also, according to this Hinduism, is very, very fine matter. But anyway, that's a different thing. And then this the mind goes out through the sense organs in order to know. But see, the mind cannot go out through the sense organs, the eyes or other sense organs, and transcend that wall of outer world of time, space, and causation. So then divinity is inconceivable. But no, they say that the mind can be concentrated just like photons. If they are allowed to go in a straight line, they create that laser beam. Laser beam, if a person focuses laser beam from the earth on the moon, the laser beam will reach the moon. It is so concentrated. So also, when the mind is concentrated, it can reach the outer wall of time, space and causation. And what does it do then? Does it drill a hole? Well, it is hard to say, but at that time the mind is, at, is able to have a glimpse of what divinity is. Only a glimpse. So mind is important that level. That's why we know that there is divinity is like this and that. Transcendental. And the mind has also other abilities. One ability the mind has is that it can read the thoughts of other people. When I was a young man, I was very studious. I used to study many subjects, particularly science subjects. And for a while I had to be work as a government auditor. And the audit department of government of India in the city where I was used to be called the controller's office. Then it was made more important. So it, it has changed into accountant general's office. Then they needed some employees, extra auditors. And then some of us young men, we were there and we, <laughs> we got the positions of auditors there. And we were in our 20s. We had to appear in many tests and pass those tests and all in order to be a full-fledged auditor. So in our neighborhood, there was a large house with several rooms in it. That was rented by some of those auditors, young auditors. All of them were bachelors. And it was India. <laughs> and they used to stay in that house. And they converted that into a <coughs> what is called in India mess house. They had their servants and cooks and they would pay all jointly pay for that. And they would stay in that house. And as that house was in our neighborhood, on Sundays, sometimes I'd go to that house to meet some of my friends, auditor friends. And 
అంటే ఐ వాస్ టాకింగ్ టు దెమ్ అబౌట్ థాట్ ట్రాన్స్పరెన్స్ దట్ మీన్స్ థాట్ కెన్ బి ట్రాన్స్ఫర్ ఫ్రమ్ వన్ మైండ్ టు అనదర్ బికాస్ ఐ హెడ్ రీడ్ అబౌట్ ఇట్ దెన్ said thought can be transferred okay let us try so then we selected one of those friends to be the recipient and i wrote down my thoughts so five or six thoughts first thought i'll, I'll get up because we are all seated the second one was i'll put my right hand on my head then third one i will start walking and the fourth one is i will walk toward the door closed door and the sixth one is i will open the door so all this one after another i wrote down and i gave a copy gave copies of these thoughts to all except the person to whose mind i would transfer my thought then i asked him make your mind blank when i ask you to make your mind blank blank and then i will ask you to think and you will have to act according to the thought that comes to your mind and strangely he my thoughts went to his mind in that order which i have already mentioned but the last one for some reason it didn't go to his mind it looks like that is he would go and open the door that he did not do then we all were surprised at seeing that my thoughts were reaching his mind but what about the last thought then i asked did you have the thought of going and opening the door he said yes yes it came but i didn't do it because it is quite cold outside <laughs> cold air would come that's why <laughs> and that was the city of shillong which is usually cold one mile high city that was the winter season also so that is possible thought transference it is called and thought reading yes is it possible for me to read the thoughts of another person yes it is possible i read about it in swami vivekananda's book and then at that time i was a novitiate monk at the ramakrishna orders center or monastery in shillong so the swami who was in charge of that center was swami samyananda so he unfortunately he became ill and so he had to take medicines according to the advice of his doctor the doctor was a homeopathic doctor very renowned and i had to go to one day i had to go to the doctor's office to bring the medicine for the swami i went there and sat in the doctor's office but the doctor was not there he had gone out to see some patient most probably so he was sitting there then another person came with a child in his arm he sat there only only two of us were there in that <laughs> office and then a thought came to my mind let's check what that person is thinking we let we let try to study his thought <laughs> as swami vivekananda said then the method is to make the mind blank first and then allow thought to come so i made my mind blank and then the thought came will this baby be cured and as soon as that thought came that person opened his mouth and said those exact those words will this baby be cured so i tested like that 
and I believe that it is possible. But then I gave up that habit because it is not good for another's mind. So that is called thought reading. Yes, the mind can do these things.